Amrita and this is my book too. Now here on this channel I often talk about how much I love romances and how they have been sort of getting me through this pandemic. But also a lot of the videos that I put out talk about how problematic some of these romances can be and what is wrong with them. And I thought I would talk today about a book that I think gets a lot of things really right and it does it in a very non-preachy, very natural way and I just wanted to give her a shout out for that. I'm talking about Lisa Claypers's Devil in Winter which is almost legendary in romance circles. So first up, I would just like to point out that this is part of a series, but um, a lot of the series that you find in romance, if you're not familiar with the genre, um, when you say a series, it is typically standalone novels with a thread running through the various books that, you know, don't really impact the overall arc of the story that you're reading. So for example, if you're reading The Bridgertons, then they all belong to the same family. But if you were to start reading on say book four, it really wouldn't change anything for you. Like you can absolutely read book four, then like read book two, then like book three, whatever you want. If you're a purist, then yes, you can start, you know, at the beginning and make your way through and then like you'll get a lot more of the context right that way, but it doesn't really matter is what I'm saying. And so if you were to read Devil in Winter without reading the previous couple of books, that would be fine because she does explain particular events that are pertinent to the actions in this book that happened in the previous novels, but at the same time, it is true that you will get more out of the characters in this book if you have read how they behaved in the previous novels. Okay, moving on. Now, Devil in Winter is the story of Evie, who is this young woman who, to all intents and purposes, is basically orphaned. And um, she's an heiress. She has a father who made his money running a gaming hell and you know this is regency england so that's very low class and her mother's family who are actually gentry and have been raising her and have been abusing her actually um, have been trying to keep her away from her dad who is now dying so they want his money but they don't want any association with him and uh, they're also trying to get her married off to one of her cousins so that they can keep her fortune in the family. And Evie is one of these women who dub themselves the wallflowers because nobody would ask them to dance with them at all the parties that they go through. And Evie is desperate to escape her abusive family, but also to see her father before he dies. And she hatches this plan, which is incredibly audacious, that she will ask Sebastian, Lord St. Vincent, who is this really disreputable rake who needs a lot of money and who actually tried to kidnap one of her best friends for her money in a previous novel. And Evie decides that since he's desperate and she's desperate, she's just going to get him to marry her and then you know he can have her money, she doesn't care, and she'll get to see her dad before he dies and also get away from her family. So that's the premise. I love a good marriage of convenience story and uh, you know right from the get-go that you know things are going to turn out pretty differently than Evie or Sebastian think. Now the main crux of this entire novel is the idea of consent and I love it. Right in the beginning where Evie asks Sebastian to marry her, she has this incredibly frank discussion with him about whether or not he is actually a rapist. And she pulls no punches, she asks him if he would have raped her friend and you know, he kind of like wants to be more hardcore than he actually is but then eventually he's like, yeah, okay, no, I wouldn't have done that. And then they negotiate, you know, 
what a sexual relationship is going to look like in their marriage and then even after they are married and even though you know by the laws of England at the time Evie was basically his property they have a conversation about whether or not he is welcome in the marital bed and then there's an entire plot point about her negotiating under what circumstances he is welcome in her bed and later on when Evie takes matters into her hands I'm sorry this is going to get a little bit spoilery but I'm going to try and keep it as general as possible but even later when Evie is empowered enough to sort of take matters into her own hands um, he reminds her that they had a deal and he's not willing to do things or take advantage of her pity for him and that's just fantastic Another thing that I really enjoy about this novel is the amount of kissing that it has. Claypaz is very well known for her lovemaking scenes which are incredibly hot, very detailed, incredibly explicit, but also like really well written. But the thing that Evie and Sebastian do a lot of is kissing. And I feel like not enough authors know how to write a good kissing scene like you'll find a bunch of authors who can write a good sex scene but you won't find as many authors who can write a great kissing scene and that is not a problem in this book not only do Evie and Sebastian get a great kissing scene but also Daisy and Cam who are secondary characters now Cam is one of the cons of this novel not because he's bad because he is an excellent character and he goes on to have his own novel in another series but um, Cam you know he sort of is a stereotype you know he's the uh, mysterious gypsy who knows like down-home remedies for deep festering wounds and is sort of mystical in mysterious ways and things like that which is just it's part of a very specific trope in romance novels and I don't really enjoy it but of the variety that you will find in Romance Landia probably Cam is the least offensive and I think Clapers kind of redeems herself a little bit in Cam's own novel later on uh, but anyway coming back to The Devil in Winter a strong feature of this entire series, the Wallflower series, is that it is the story of female friends. And I love female friendships. I love them on film, I love them on TV, I love them in books, I love them in real life. I always say that, you know, I might not have gotten a lot of things right, but I do get my friends right. And that is one thing that I am justifiably proud of and I love how supportive these women are to each other and especially to Evie who literally has nobody in her corner except for these women and by extension the men that they marry as somebody who has created a family of her own of sorts over the years with the friends that she's made over the years I feel like Evie and her relationship with these women and their families is so precious and so delightful. Her greatest fear in marrying Sebastian is not whether she would be socially ostracized or whether he'll be a good husband. She really doesn't think that he's going to be a good husband anyway. But she's really worried that she is going to lose her female friendships. You know, she's going to lose the friendships of these women whom she loves and whom she has come to depend upon. And I love that the first meeting that she has with these women, especially the one that, you know, Sebastian tried to kidnap and whom she is most afraid of facing. The first thing that they tell her is how much they love her and they are worried for her. Like they don't see her actions as a slight against themselves. They're just worried that she might be in trouble. That's a healthy friendship and I love it. I also love Sebastian. He's like one of my favorite tropes when it comes to male leads in that he is the rake but it's not so much that he's reformed it's just that he is basically this really spoiled not rich but like privileged young man who just really needs a job 
and he keeps trying to pretend that he's like this really big tough guy and then as the novel goes through you discover that he's really just a ball of beeswax i mean there's his relationship with evie where he has fallen for her within seconds of them eloping but also he's just trying to pretend like it really doesn't exist and if he doesn't mention it like if he doesn't see it it won't exist and evie figures him out in like seconds and that's hilarious but also you know he decides to start working for the club that her dad owned and he then discovers that <laughs> that comes with a whole other set of challenges and you kind of see him being re-educated and him trying to like come to terms with things in his head and that's hilarious like throughout the novel sebastian just grows and stretches as a person and i love seeing that happen in books like that's one of my favorite things i hate it when books you know start with the guy being like a big badass and then it ends with him being a big badass like where's the character development yes sometimes you just want to see like a big hulking block of man meat but those are never going to be my favorite romances you know what i mean i need to see the leads engage and help each other grow and become better versions of themselves it sounds very kumbaya but if you have read a good romance novel where that happens you know the thrill of seeing that happen it's like my babies my sweet sweet babies they're all grown up now such a warm feeling in my heart I'm not going to pretend that this is a book that has no problems whatsoever. There are conventions that a romance novel follows and this was written quite a few years ago, you know, so there are certain current conventions that would say that, you know, X is problematic or Y is problematic and they would be correct, you know. There's a bunch of things that we grew up reading and loving that are problematic when we look at it today. but it is also a really well written novel that does so much with conventional tropes and it shows you the real possibilities that you know you don't have to write for the lowest common denominator like there's no reason for a romance author to write to the worst of the tropes you can take a trope that is problematic and then turn it into something that is delightful something that is progressive something that gives people something to point to in videos like this when they say you know romance novels they're great for more videos please hit the subscribe button